I hope I'm not falling. I hope I'm not falling down. I choke as I plummet. Lost grip, now I'm falling. Down. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be talking about how to find the Aaron Ralston rock. If uh, you're watching this video, you're probably familiar with the story, uh, so I'll spare you the details on that. But it's something I've wanted to do for a while, and on this trip to Utah, this camping trip I'm on, I uh, decided to go find it. It's out in Canyonlands. I knew it was out in Canyonlands, uh, but I couldn't find anything on YouTube or the internet, really, that was explaining how to get there. Uh, plenty of YouTube videos of people who went there. Um, plenty of photos on the internet of people who have found it, but I couldn't really find details of how to get there. So I wanted to go out, find it myself, and then maybe help you guys out if you're looking uh, for the rock and let you know where it is. So where I am right now is out in Canyonlands, which is where all that went down. And there's a camping uh, spot called BJ's Motel 6. Uh, it's not actually a motel, but just a cool little area near Blue John uh, to camp. And I'm actually not even going to be staying here. I'm going to be going further on. There's uh, a couple other slot canyons up the ways a bit that I want to check out but um so my first attempt this is actually it took me two attempts to find the Aaron Ralston rock and the first attempt I thought I could see the uh, go through Horseshoe Canyon which is where the great gallery rock art is and I highly recommend checking that out too by the way if you're over here in this area really uh awesome old Indian artwork on these uh, walls of this canyon that they estimate it could be up to 2,000 years old, which is crazy. But so I thought I could do that. And at the end of that hike, just keep going to the end of Horseshoe Canyon. It looked like it ran into the slot canyon where Aaron Rawson was. And how I found that slot canyon, because it's hard to find, like I said, it's hard to find information on this on, on the internet. But if you search on your Google Maps, Aaron Rawson Rock, it pulls up a coordinate location for it and you can see what slot canyon it's on. And so what I was doing was my location services work out here on my phone, but I have no service. So I just check my phone every once in a while and make sure I was heading in the right direction towards it. But that method going through Horseshoe Canyon was actually a failure because uh, when you get to the end of Horseshoe, finally, it's a pretty decent hike, but when you get to the end, you're faced with a 30 foot cliff leading up to the slot canyon. You can see the slot canyon Aaron Rawson was in, but it's just 30 foot up, uh, smooth rock that's just a cliff. So there's no way I could get up there. So I was disappointed, hiked back out. And uh, the next day I went to a trailhead called Little Blue John Trailhead. And I figured on the satellite GPS, I recommend turning on your satellite GPS. It looked like I could just follow that trail all the way to the slot canyon that Aaron Rawson was in. And that's pretty much what I did. Uh, you start out and maybe about I don't know, 30 minutes of really easy hiking. You run into your first little bit of canyoneering and it's nothing too tricky. Uh, you ought to be able to get through it pretty easy. And then it's easy hiking from there all the way uh, to the slot canyon, really. You're just walking through uh, regular dirt, like this sandy dirt that's at the bottom of all these canyons. And uh, yeah, just follow the direction of the canyon and keep an eye on your dot just to make sure you're not turning the wrong way or anything. And there's a few canyons that break off of it, but I'm pretty sure that most of them are all dead ends. So you, it's pretty hard not to follow this canyon all the way to the, the Aaron Ralston Rock. And once you get there, it's pretty obvious that you've come across it because of that uh, iconic and famous S log that's wedged in the top of the slot canyon. And so you'll see that and then you can like, okay, yeah, I know I'm in the right place. And uh, then you do a bit of canyoneering to get through to the actual rock. And you may miss the rock when you get there. I know the first time I went through, I just passed right by the rock. And I thought to myself, I was like, is that it? But I couldn't tell because there's a ton of other boulders in the same area. And a lot of other rocks wedged in there with a lot of uh, logs and sticks. And so it doesn't look quite like it does on the movie. Or even in a lot of the Google images that you'll look up of the, of the rock location. So I hiked all the way to the end of the slot canyon. And I recommend doing that anyway. It's incredible uh, canyoneering through this these tight squeezes and, and turns through the slot canyon. It's really, really beautiful. It's like, um, it's like if Antelope Canyon is walking through a museum, this is like actually 
being there in the stuff that that you're looking at in the museum i don't know if that makes any sense but it's really it's really cool really authentic you just feel like you're you're out there in the middle of nowhere. It's just you and this slot canyon. It's a really cool experience. You get to the end and it opens up in this great view of the end of Horseshoe Canyon. And uh, it's, it, I could see where I was the day before. And um, really cool view, nice little cliff. You can see where some people had rappelled off of it. Uh, but yeah, then I went back through, came to the rock again. And this time I compared a lot of photos or the, I had screenshot a photo of Aaron Ralston next to it. And so I was comparing it. I compared a lot of the rock on the, on the side of the slot Canyon with the photo. And I finally lined everything up and was like, oh, this is it. This is crazy. And pretty cool to be there where it all went down. I mean, I'm not a fanboy of Aaron Ralston or anything. I haven't read his book. I saw 127 hours, love the movie. And I really, love the story of survival that it is but uh yeah just a, a, a really cool experience being there okay so this is the route i took from salt lake city it's about a five hour drive to east utah out here in Canyonlands, and uh you'll have service the whole way until probably right here this is when i lose service on 24 but this is still paved it's not the dirt road yet now when you turn off of 24 take that left this is when it becomes a dirt road with the sand dunes on it. But like I said, nothing too bad there. Uh, and that'll take you straight to the Great Gallery Rock Art and that hike. And so originally what I thought I could do is continue along this hike after the Great Gallery Rock Art and just hike to the end and then enter the Slot Canyon from there. But right here is a dead end. So that's uh, like the 30 foot cliff to get up into the slot canyon. I couldn't do it. So what I did was I went and I parked at Little Blue John Canyon Trailhead. And that just leads you through this really easy hike through this canyon all the way to the Aaron Ralston uh, Boulder. And it's not too difficult and it's pretty easy to just follow the main trajectory of the canyon. There's a few turnoffs, but uh, if you follow the the wider trail that leads through the main part of the canyon it pretty much takes you straight there just stay left there's a few turnoffs that might lead back up uh blue john canyon in a different direction so just stay left and that'll take you all the way to aaron Ralston uh, rock but if you keep your phone on with your location services you will have location services and you'll be able to see your dot on the map and you can follow it straight to the aaron Ralston rock so nothing too difficult, and that's the method I would recommend doing to get there. Uh, okay, one thing I forgot to mention is that to get out here to the Blue John Canyon, Horseshoe Canyon, Aaron Ross and Rock area, you have to drive down about 30 miles of dirt roads. And I mean, it's nothing too intense. There are some sand dunes that you have to pass, which can feel a little bit sketch but any vehicle ought to be able to do it. Um, you don't have to have four wheel drive or anything. There's signs that say roads may be impassable and if there's has just been a storm, maybe they are, but I've never had any problem and I always take the cheapest rental car I can get, which is usually an economy car. This one, uh, this trip, it's a Chevy Malibu and I've had no problems. But yeah, it's just a lot of uh, dirt roads out here and it makes access a little bit more difficult, but Honestly, I like that because it keeps crowds down and uh, you know, if something's hard to get to, not many people want to put in the effort or the work to get there. And then the people who do get to have it to themselves. Like today, I have not seen another living soul. It's just been me out here, which is perfect. That's the way I like it. But yeah, just something to keep in mind, the, uh, the dirt roads, nothing to worry about though. And it stacks up like the problems. I don't wanna get the catch up. I just want love. Sick of being sad. I'm feeling washed up. But it's happiness fade with the problems stacked. What's up with that? Yeah.